Hey folks, Alan Mandic, the Hot Rod Hippie here with C10 build vlog number nine. In this video right here, I wanted to walk you through customization of a panel. This is a factory replacement tailgate for this 1965 GMC truck, but I don't wanna leave it stock. This is not a restoration by any stretch of the imagination. This area right here has been trimmed back. This flange used to come out and be parallel with the front facing flange. The reason for that is we're running these newer metal style straps rather than the chains that would have been on this truck for the tailgate to be folded down with. We didn't really wanna have the chains floating around hanging off the back of this truck anymore. When we're talking about a custom truck like this, having those tailgate chains flopping around on the back of this thing, yes, when you get new ones, they can be cloth covered and even stainless, but they're still gonna get dirt trapped inside of there. They're still gonna rub on the back of the truck at least a little bit. Yeah, full custom paint job, it's just not something we want to have happening and or have those parts just hanging off the back of the truck. So that's why my dad installed this Marque kit that will mount in here and fold up in there and be much, much cleaner, nothing visible from the outside of the gate. Now, since the chain and hook me mechanism also functions as the latch to hold the gate up, we were running these hidden latches. That's what this is here. My dad went ahead and installed these. What you do is you insert these through the end of the gate, through a new hole that's bored in there. Then this knob sticks up through this slot area and that bolt holds it in place with that last little hole there. These are a spring-loaded design and then you just go ahead and reach over top of the gate, pull that little tab, and it'll go ahead and release the gate. On the truck itself, it engages into these holes right here that get rubber grommets in there so that the pin's not rattling around or anything like that. Now, those are the custom details my dad has made on this gate to this point. I'm gonna go ahead and do some of the stuff that I, I very often do on resto mod type builds. I don't like to leave things exactly as they were. Like I've said, if this was a strict restoration, I would leave this stuff alone because this is the way panels fit when they rolled off the factory floor and the way things were. That's not what I'm aiming to do and it's why I don't really like doing restorations. Personally, I far, far, far prefer customizing vehicles and making things better than they were originally. With that, since this area has been cut out, I'm gonna add some additional spot welds on here to reinforce this structure on the side of this thing. You can also see here, there's this little bit of black overlap. These are where these two panels come together. And this is the kind of stuff that's just normal. It's gonna, you're gonna see this on factory builds, but I'm gonna shave this black piece back to meet up with the already cleaned off section. So it's just a cleaner look. When the gates fold down, you don't see some lip hanging past here or anything like that. I'm also gonna go ahead and trim back this flange just a little more to clean it up a little bit. You can see here, there's actually spot welds on here that when this area got cut out, they got, eaten up, they got taken away, and they need to be reinforced because these two layers are no longer properly attached anymore. Another thing that I want to address is the stamping here is a little bit soft. This piece tapers upward toward this bead detail. It's not nearly as crisp as I would like. Now I could clamp this with a pair of vice grips when I weld this spot weld, and I will do that, but that may not crisp this up as much as I want. Meaning I may need to come here with a hammer and dolly or some other method and crisp this up manually. Now that's one of those things that I've talked about in previous videos where these stampings for aftermarket parts are sometimes a little bit soft. So I don't know originally if this tailgate would have had that crisp detail or whether it would have been soft like this. It's possible that it came like that soft from the factory. Actually, I have the original gate around here, so let's check. This is the original gate off of this truck. I'll show you in a second what this is. My dad actually made this and it's really cool. But this gate actually does have a crisper detail right there. So that's one of those cases where the aftermarket panel is not nearly as pronounced and defined as it probably should be versus the original component. This is the other side of that gate I was talking about. This is actually a neat little bench that my dad built outside of his garage here. He took the ends of his old bed that he had before he bought the new bed sides that he got he cut those off. He took his original tailgate, which is actually bowed in the middle, and that's why we're not using it for the build here. And he created this whole frame structure for it with a wooden bench seat for it, and even this classic bicentennial 1976 Pennsylvania plate on there. Oh. I think this thing's pretty neat, and honestly, it's pretty darn comfortable too. Oh. Okay, back to work. I'm gonna start by adding those additional spot welds that I was talking about so that I have a little more structure to this thing before I start grinding, cutting, and modifying things a little bit more. So let's get into welding on it. Now 
now that I have those additional spot welds added on, I can start shaving back some of this material. I've crisped up those corners a little bit via adding those spot welds. Basically what I did was when I clamped those two panels together, they were kind of like this originally. When I clamped them together and then spot welded them in position like that, now they're held like this, creating a automatic, more detailed, crisp corner in this area. Now that was the bottom of the tailgate that I crisped up and cleaned up via that spot weld method. Up here at the top, I don't really know what I need to add a third spot weld in between these two, but this corner is also kind of soft. For this one, I'm gonna use a hammer and some tools that I have to clean this up. To crisp that up, I'm gonna go ahead and use this thing. This is a tool that I have shown in a video before and I've mentioned before. Basically, it's a concrete breaking chisel, a block chisel, that I rounded the end off of and radiused a little bit so that I can use it for this exact kind of purpose. Now, what I'm doing is I'm using this thing as a corking tool. I'm going ahead and chasing along the body line to go ahead and crisp it up with the tool and the hammer. Now you can see as I go around the corner, I quicken my pace and I do lighter hammer blows, but more rapidly. And the idea here is I want to shape that corner in and slowly turning the chisel around that corner allows me to do that. It allows me to create the radius corner that's supposed to be there, then crisp it up so that it'll look much better. And here is the finished product. This is what we're looking at here. You can see it's a much crisper corner here. It's much better defined. When my dad trimmed this back to use those straps, the metal straps for the tailgate. He did a good job, but I want to do a little bit better. It's a little bowed in the middle. He did the best that he could with the tools that he had, but I'm going to go ahead and just fine tune it, get a straighter line on this thing. But that means I'm going to lose a little bit more of the spot welds that were holding us all together. So we're going to go ahead and address that after I clean back these flanges. So that's just all going to be using the SunX die grinder, but I'm using this half horsepower die grinder to just grind back as simple and smooth as I can. I may grab a body file and clean up for a little bit straighter edge on things. We'll see if I can fit it into the situation. So while I'm using the die grinder, I'm taking it slow and steady with the sanding disc on here. I'm using an 80 grit Norton sanding disc and I'm working my way to my line, but not quite touching it. The goal here is I wanna try and keep things as even as I can. If I have a ruler that will fit in here, I'll probably put that up against there and check for flat and straight as I'm going just to work my way through here. I'm able to fit the file in there a little bit and get the middle section anyway to make sure that I'm getting straight. The one recess section, which is actually where the hinge for, for the middle of the strap mechanism folds into and requires a little more depth on the cut of the flange. I went in there with my little belt sander from Dynabraid, the Dynafile 2, and I cleaned that up that way. It's one of my absolute favorite tools. It's an expensive one, but that thing is so worth it. I use it all the time. Now that I ground back and cut back those flanges a little bit, I need to go ahead and reattach this. The spot welds on the one side are completely gone. On the other side, they're barely hanging on. So I need to reinforce that lip, that flange, and make it stronger. How am I gonna do this? Well, quite simply, I'm gonna go ahead and stitch up right along the edge of this panel. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clamp these two panels together and I'm gonna run small beads stitched along the edge of this thing. And I'm gonna try and focus my TIG welder in to the joint between the two panels trying to get the maximum amount of penetration with the smallest amount of weld buildup because I need to grind whatever I put on there flat to this surface as it stands right now. I can't afford to add weld to the outside of this and have it expand outward because that's gonna come into the area where those lift straps need to stay. Before I go stitch welding along this flange like I just talked about, I'm gonna go ahead and mark. Now I like to mark these kinds of things so I get the even spacing that I want. The spot welds are almost always done on a specific spacing. In this case, they're somewhere between inch and three quarter apart and two inches apart. So I wanna put my stitch welds in the middle between those spot welds. The goal is to just have it look a little cleaner and a little more professionally done.
Now it's time to go ahead and flip this tailgate over to the other side and then I can get to the actual front face or well, the back face, the part that's actually gonna face people at a stoplight. First thing I did is I stripped off the e-coat all along the edges because that's where I'm trying to work on this thing. There's nowhere on it in the middle that I'm too worried about modifying things. Everything's out here at the edges that I'm seeing a need to change things. The biggest thing that I'm seeing that I don't really like is that these ends here, the way they end on this panel, they're a little tall right here in this raised section, this angle here. It's like they're a little bit too tall, so they have to taper down out to this outside area. Now I know because I had this tailgate on there before, which is obviously for what I'm doing here important to mock it up on there and check out how it fits. I've done that previously outside of this video, so unfortunately I don't have that to show you. But I know that this tailgate hung just past the end of the bed, a little more than I like. Unfortunately, to make it flush with the end of the bed would be a lot of work and it's just not in the cards on this project. Uh, if I were going for like a full on show truck, I would put that effort into it. For this one, I think we're gonna be okay with it being how it is if I clean these ends up. Part of cleaning these ends up is like I said, that little extra length, that the taper down of these panels. I'm not liking that and I wanna go ahead and taper them down to this thing as best I can, get them a little more flush to the tailgate itself, which will then get them a little more flush to the body. Now, the way in which I'm gonna do that is, you can see I cleaned a longer section of these pieces here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna cut on this raised panel section here, I'm gonna cut a straight line back here so that this whole area can taper down to meet here a little bit better. Also, this tailgate, this piece, that has another overhanging flange area like what I had on the back side of this thing. So I need to trim that so that it's flush to the outer skin. So first things first, I'm gonna go ahead and mark my cut lines onto all the pieces, the areas where I'm gonna cut so I have something straight to follow. One of the hardest parts about what I'm about to do is the fact that I cannot get to the inner structure of these things at all. I don't think I wanna go as long on the cuts as I would like. I'd like to do like a six inch long cut. The longer I taper that cut out, the less noticeable it will create a bump or anything in this and less body work that might be necessary here. Unfortunately, because I cannot access inside of there to hammer and dolly and do any of that kind of work, I'm more, I'm more worried about the warpage and, and issues that may occur because of that. So I, I'm just not gonna do it. I'm gonna make shorter cuts, probably more like three inch cuts. After slicing each of the corners, I was able to get them kind of to fall into place where I wanted them. I clamped out at the very edge of the panel and let the whole piece kind of drag down gradually. That pretty much worked on the top two pieces. It was pretty straightforward, nothing really special had to occur. It kind of just fell into place, thankfully. The bottom two, which required heavier cuts to get them to roll in as far as I wanted them to, required that I clamped out at the outer edge, I tacked it out there, and then I tapped lightly with a hammer and a slapping spoon on the way across the cut so that it fell into where I needed it to be. Once my cuts are made and once I have things clamped in position, it's time to start welding. Now I'm TIG welding here because that's pretty much all I do when it comes to sheet metal work. I tacked various points along the line that I cut into this thing and then I'm gonna go ahead and come back through and fully weld it up. I'm definitely taking my time, moving around a little bit, not focusing too much of my heat in one spot while I'm welding in this situation so I don't overheat and then increase the chance of warpage on what I'm doing. After I got it all fully welded and in place, I went ahead and sanded with the sanding disc on the die grinder to knock down the welds. I just went to touch down to the base material and that's all I needed to do. Thankfully, none of this warped around or moved much at all. It's pretty heavy metal with angles all really close to where I was welding, so it really didn't distort, and that was a godsend in this situation. All I had to do was go ahead and sand it with the DA afterwards, and I'm good to go. I, this bull, of course, require a little bit of body filler to get it exactly how it should be, but without being able to hammer and dolly this, this was far better of a result than it could have been. Now this all kind of means that the ends each kind of roll in toward the end, which isn't ideal as this is a straight piece, but my only other option would be to cut this entire back bottom section here and get do the same thing for the whole thing. And that's just far too impractical, especially with how I can't get in there to clamp it properly, to hammer and dolly it. That just will not work out in this situation. The last thing that I have to do on this thing is to clean up the edges of this tailgate. The outside edge of this thing, I attack just the way I did on the inside edge. I come with the die grinder and I start knocking down the higher spots that I can see 
by marking a line on there and cutting down to that. On the outside edge, it was much easier to use a body file to get a good straight line on things. So I definitely did that here. Since I didn't have any recesses I was fighting, I was on, all on the outside edge. I could use a body file and clean this up the way I need to. This is one of those projects that I spent all day on today, getting it to this point. I think it was worth this time that I put into it, but do you? I don't know, let me know in the comments down below. If you wanna see about the roll pan that fits underneath this behind the bumper that my dad put together, check out the video at the link up here. Honestly, this thing is coming together great. It's taking a lot more time than I had hoped it was gonna take, but the 65 GMC project is really coming along. Be sure to check out the other build videos if you haven't in this series. I think that's gonna wrap it up for this video, folks. I just wanted to walk you through a bit of the process as I was working on this thing and show you what it was that I put into it. I know that in the end, this wasn't one where you can see a dramatic change on this panel, but sometimes that's just the reality. The minor changes are what make it better in my eyes. I can look at this thing now and be happier with the finished product than I would have been if I hadn't touched it at all. All right, folks, I hope you found this video interesting. If you did, please go ahead and drop it a like. Let me know in the comments down below, what do you think of this tailgate? Do you like the work that I did to it? Do you think I improved it or not? Let me know in the comments down below. Check out the Patreon account, patreon.com slash hot rod hippie. That directly supports this channel and get subscribed to keep up to date with all the hot rod hippie content. Thanks for coming around, folks.